This episode is brought to you by Dashlane. Never forget another password and keep all your credentials secure by signing up for a free account today. It's no secret that throughout history, there have been some very mean monarchs, kings, queens, and sometimes emperors that have not just spilled the blood of their external enemies, but also killed those closest to them. The show Game of Thrones might be a fictionalized account of the often bloodthirsty, greedy, cold-hearted nature of rulers, but it's also not too far away from reality when we look back throughout history. Uneasy lies the head that wears a crown wrote William Shakespeare in his play King Henry IV, which is basically the same as saying, heavy is the head that wears the crown. Ruling can be a curse and a burden, but some of those rulers were simply cruel. Let's see who were the worst. In this episode of the Infographic Show, who were the most murderous monarchs in history? Henry VIII of England. We'll start with someone most of you have heard about. You could say Henry VIII wasn't anywhere near as bad as some other monarchs, but he deserves a mention and we'll get to the worst at the end of the list. Just a quick search on who was executed during the king's reign will pull up 92 names, many of whom were burned at the stake for heresy. But these were just the well-known people. History websites say anywhere from 57,000 to 72,000 people were executed during his reign from 1509 to 1547. Some say these numbers could be exaggerated, but there's no doubt the king had a taste for blood. His most notable victims were two of his wives. One was Anne Boleyn. Some historians say she had her head taken off because of adultery and being involved in a plot to kill Henry VIII. Others say she was accused of witchcraft. Anne was his second wife, and it wouldn't be until his fifth wife that another would be executed. Her name was Catherine Howard, and the charges against her were treason and adultery. Bloody Mary. Yep, it's a drink, and the name is partly based on the queen. She was Mary I of England, and she was the daughter of wife killer Henry VIII. When she took control, she tried to reverse what had started to happen during her father's reign, which was called the Reformation. In short, it was the Church of England pulling away from the Catholic Church. This was in line with the Protestant Reformation. Mary got her name from persecuting anyone embracing this movement, finding them, and burning them at the stake. She burned so many dissenters, she earned the title of Bloody Mary. Caligula. His full name was Gaius Julius Caesar Augustus Germanicus. There are many tales of his horrific actions during his rule as Roman Emperor from 41 AD to 37 AD. It seems he was outrageously narcissistic and had delusions of grandeur. It said he believed he could talk to gods and was sadistic at times. He did some horrible things during the Roman games too. One time, he fought a gladiator who only had a wooden sword and then stabbed him to death, looking particularly pleased with himself. Another time, it said he was frustrated at the lack of prisoners he could watch being devoured by wild animals and so forced part of the crowd into the arena to be torn apart by the beasts. It's not known how many people he tortured or killed, but it's thought to be many. We can't really call this man a monarch, but Roman emperors were treated much like kings. Ivan the Terrible. This is another ruler that was given an appropriate nickname. Under his rule as the Grand Prince of Moscow and then Tsar of Russia, it's said he did many good things and much of them were related to innovation and expansionism. He was at his worst, though, for what is called the Massacre of Novgorod, in which he had his army put men, women, and children into freezing waters and kill them. It's said he tortured and killed thousands more, and it was all because he was paranoid that the rich city was planning to defect from his rule. It's also rumored that when he was just 13, he had one aristocrat eaten alive by a pack of dogs. Many of his own people suffer too, as expansion doesn't always mean a sharing of the bounty. It has to be said that this ruler was formidable in his reign in terms of conquest and modernizing. He just gets the name because it seems he had a brutal way about him. King Leopold II of Belgium. He was sometimes called the Butcher of the Congo. Under King Leopold II's rule, it's thought millions of Congolese Africans died in the early 20th century. It's thought that during his bid to westernize Africa, something many Europeans would try to do, large-scale massacres happened. He is also known for being exceptionally cruel to the Congolese if his rubber quotas weren't met. This sometimes meant viciously flogging people and often cutting off their genitals or their limbs. After one village protested the incredibly harsh working conditions, one Belgian wrote, the commanding officer ordered us to cut off the heads of the men and hang them on the village palisades, also their sexual members, and to hang the women and the children on the palisade in the form of a cross. This really was the heart of darkness. Attila the Hun. He ruled the Huns with his brother Breda from 434. This man and his powerful army were called the Scourge of God by the Romans and greatly feared. Attila, it seems, was the worst half as he likely killed his own brother for power. 
He was also a great leader and led many successful campaigns across Europe. It's often said it was the way he won that was especially barbaric and cruel, so that's why he gets a mention here. Modus operandi and body count. It's not known exactly how many people the barbarian and his army killed, but the number is said to be in the hundreds of thousands. Vlad the Impaler. You might have heard of Vlad from the Dracula legend, but unlike the bloodsucking count, the bloodthirsty Impaler, who was the ruler of Wallachia from 1436, was certainly real. Wallachia was part of present-day Romania. According to historical documents, after one attack on the Ottoman army, Vlad's own army left what was called a Forest of the Impaled. Then he hit the town. Historian Leonikos Chakokondailis wrote in the histories that about 20,000 men, women, and children had been impaled, quite a sight for the Turks and the Sultan himself. He also added, there were infants too, affixed to their members on the stakes, and birds had made their nests in their entrails. In fact, following the invention of movable type, stories spread around Europe about how this man was the most sadistic ruler ever. It's said he invented new and horrific methods of torture that were unheard of even in those times. He's also said to be a national hero for some, or he is sometimes called yet another cruel ruler. Those he defeated obviously tell the more gruesome tales. Genghis Khan Khan was the first great Khan of the Mongol Empire. He was born in 1162 and died in 1227. During his life, he became the most feared man in the world, and today, he's still routinely judged as perhaps the most brutal, but also the most successful war campaign manager. He is credited for modernizing culture and also for his trade aspirations. He's also credited with killing 10 to 15 million people in a time when military technology couldn't take out great numbers in one fell swoop. There are mixed depictions of him from country to country, but it's generally agreed that this ace military leader had a penchant not just for fighting soldiers, but also for killing millions of non-military personnel, such as he did in the Iranian plateau. Many international historians write how he would enter towns, burn them to the ground, and then systematically kill everyone that was in them. Some historians write that when he invaded the Persian city of Nishapur, he spared the locals at first. But when his son-in-law was killed by a Nishapurin, his wife demanded revenge. It was then that anything breathing was slaughtered. Men, women, children, and reportedly even their cats and dogs. Some say around 1.7 million people were massacred. But was that entirely true? Many people think the number is too big. Khan is also a national hero in Mongolia. As the saying goes, the victors write the history. But what version of history you get often depends on which language you are reading it in. Or it may even change depending on where the historian stands politically. Writer George Lane said in the book Daily Life in the Mongol Empire that after one battle with the Rus principalities, the Mongol leaders put a heavy wooden platform over Russian generals and ate a victory feast as they were all squashed to death underneath. Despite varying interpretations of history, we think it's safe to say Genghis Khan had a lot of blood on his hands. Today's episode featured some pretty evil individuals. You know what else is evil? Trying to keep track of all your online passwords. With websites asking us to invent more and more complex passwords every day, it can be a real pain in the neck to keep track of them all. Emancipate yourself from the evil rule of complex passwords today. Try Dashlane completely free for 30 days and discover how much easier your password life can be. To make the lives of the staff at the Infographic Show easier, we've all decided to use Dashlane. Dashlane is a password manager that makes it easy for you to control your digital identity. Whether you're great with computers or not, Dashlane is extremely easy to use. Anytime you have to come up with a new password, you can use Dashlane to generate a super secure one. The security of Dashlane is awesome, but the autofill is what makes it so much fun to use. You'll never have to log into another website again because Dashlane does it for you automatically. Dashlane is available for PCs, Macs, iOS, and Android devices, and if you use Dashlane Premium, you can sync your passwords and secure login details across all your devices. Become more secure and support the infographic show at the same time by using the code INFOGRAPHICS and get 10% off Dashlane Premium from the get-go by going to dashlane.com slash infographicshow or by clicking the link in the description. We certainly could have added many more rulers. Can you add to this list? Let us know in the comments. Also, be sure to check out our other video called Most Evil Popes. Thanks for watching, and as always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. See you next time!